Hello, everyone, and welcome to Prophecy Files Briefing. Glad that you've joined us today. I hope you'll share this out on your social media. Today, I want to speak to you about a couple of topics uh, that is very important. And if you have been following the news, you've seen in recent hours how that a helicopter that was containing the president of Iran and other top officials has actually crashed, and there is no sign of life for anyone that was on that aircraft, on that helicopter. It's a very serious event that could spiral into some other events, uh, depending on how Iran takes that. There has been no word from Israel. If they were involved, they said that that wasn't anything to do with them. And uh, other nations are making their comments. It's very important as we keep our eyes on the Middle East of all that is taking place, and especially for the believer, for Christians, in your support of Israel. But first, I want to take you to an article that's titled, NFL's Attack on Harrison Bucker uh, is Rank Anti-Christian Bigotry. This is amazing, and you're seeing the putrefying um, infection that has happened in our society that is now, as I would call it, and the scripture calls it, calling evil good and good evil. I'll take that up in a moment. But let me share with you a few clips of this particular article. It opens up with this statement. In corporate America today, there is a, uh, there's a permission structure in place to attack, defame, and destroy anyone who dares to be publicly Christian. That's exactly what's taking place here. Uh, he goes on in this article to say uh, that the NFL has absolutely denounced uh, as not being the official statements or beliefs of the, of the NFL organization of what uh, the NFL star Butker has been saying. And so what was, the article says, what was the horrible, non-inclusive thing that the 28-year-old Buckner said? He makes this statement. This is his statement. Things like abortion, IVF, surrogacy, euthanasia, as well as growing support for degenerate cultural values and media all stem from the pervasiveness of disorder, he said. He goes on to say that uh, he would heap in this article, he would heap up heartfelt praise upon his wife, Isabel, and told female graduates that whatever career success that they might achieve, their most important title would be homemaker. This is what he said, quote, some of you may go on to lead successful careers in the world, but I would venture to guess that the majority of you are most excited about your marriage and the children that you'll bring into this world. He said uh, that after he made that statement, uh, the crowd rose with spontaneous cheers from the audience, uh, not coming from the media and not coming certainly from the NFL. In fact, there are organizations that are calling for his dismissal from the Kansas City Chiefs uh, and as well in this particular article. It goes on to say that obviously none of this should surprise us now. The article states the post-Christian left has erected a neo-pagan religion of its own a kind of inversion of Christianity that consists of an unstable admixture of abortion, uh, sexual liberation, gender ideology, and identity politics. If you speak against any of those things, you have committed blasphemy and might be targeted and destroyed. That's obvious in the world that we're living in today where the world is calling good evil and evil good. Here's what the Bible says from the book of Isaiah. And this is prophetic. It's happening all around, and our culture society would di digress into a state that was like that of Noah's day and like that of Sodom and Gomorrah, according to Jesus' own words in Matthew 24. Isaiah 5 makes this very clear statement. And this is the remarks of a people that have uh, gone away from God and literally in their own pride are calling for God to bring it on. This is what the Bible says in Isaiah 5, 19. To those that say, let him make speed, let God make speed and hasten his work, that we may see it, and let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw nigh and come, that we may know it. What a pride-filled statement it is in verse 19 to say, God, bring on your judgment. We're ready for you. Verse 20, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter, bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. 
It goes on in verse 21, Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. In this one chapter of Isaiah chapter 5, it deals with the six woes that come uh, toward the six type of sins that God is speaking to the uh, people of God about to be able to get their hearts right. But it seems that pride and the evil has taken over to such a degree that like today, good and evil are so skewed, it's such a gray area that people can't or do, do not want to call evil uh, by, its, by its category, by its name, against God and his law. And good is skewed to be something that is absolutely out of step with culture. These six woes deal with the six, six types of sin here in Isaiah 5. Number one, the selfish greed. Now listen to these. Secondly, drunken behavior. Thirdly, deceit and mockery towards God's power and his intention to judge their sin. In other words, the way that they're saying it, bring it on God, they have a contempt for God that says judgment will come. And any preacher that might say it today, or even an NFL star that might say these things. Number four, twisting, listen to this, twisting and misrepresenting God's moral standard. There was a woe pronounced against the people of God on this. Number five, boastfulness and pride. And six, the corruption of justice. Ladies and gentlemen, we're seeing all of these things in our culture right now. And Bible prophecy bears it very clearly that this, this would be the condition of society as we draw closer to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So in an ungodly society, for people to portray good and evil, right and wrong, and skew the two or mix them or actually call good evil and evil good, uh, this kind of misguided and uh, ignorant behavior is coming against all that is freedom, compassion, understanding, all of those kind of things. And when it, when it is defined by the society that we're in, uh, it's defined as tolerance. We're not tolerant enough. We're calling it uh, straight evil and good or good and evil. Consider the laws of God that he has laid down in his word and how important that it is for us not only to follow them, but to obey them to its full extent. Because in the society we're in today with the closed-mindedness uh, toward the things of God, biblical ignorance, and they would turn that and say, well, all of you that hold to God's word are the closed-minded, judgmental, hateful people. You're looking at prophecy being fulfilled from Isaiah 5 all the way to the time we're in right now. I want to encourage you, never compromise the Word of God. Never compromise the values that God and His principles have set down for us to follow. In doing so, you're going to find life, liberty. You're going to find freedom in the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's the reason why the Pace Assembly is one that will continue to preach the Word of God, reach out to the lost, the hurting, no matter who they are and what background they're from, and certainly support the nation of Israel. This past weekend, we took the opportunity to be able to take this picture that you're seeing on the screen now so that it can be broadcast worldwide to let people know that this church stands with Israel. I would encourage you and your Bible study group, your church, whoever that it may be, if you stand with Israel, now's the time to let your voice be heard and your picture be seen. So take the opportunity and join with us as we support the state of Israel as God's chosen people. Till the next time we get together on the Prophecy File Briefing, remember Jesus Christ is coming soon.